Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, our Battle of the Brains 2024 predictions for Microsoft 365. Uh, while we give everyone a minute to get logged in, um, we're going to give you guys an icebreaker poll. So go ahead and submit your answer. Um, the question is, if you could have uh, one superpower to manage your Microsoft 365 ecosystem, what would you choose to do? And you can submit your answer. Predict all future Microsoft releases, instantly understand Copilot's impact to your environment, automate recurring tasks with your mind, have x-ray vision across all tenants and applications, or teleport to the pre-cloud era. I'll give you just a, a moment to get your answers in. Okay, so it looks like most of you said that you would like to automate recurring tasks with your mind. I, I agree. Um, I understand that. Um, but we'll, we'll cover some of some more about this um, a little bit later. So now that we have everybody, um, let's go ahead and get started. I am Joelle Palmer. I'm Corview's Director of Marketing and the host of today's webinar. So let's get started with a couple of um, housekeeping rules. So if you experience any technical issues during the, the broadcast, please use the chat feature to let us know. Uh, the event is being recorded and it'll be available on demand a few days later. Um, and we'll share that with you via email. And if you have any questions during the presentation, just go ahead and share those using the questions feature in the GoToWebinar panel. During today's webinar, you're going to hear from our Microsoft experts and MVPs as they share their predictions for 2024. We'll also walk you through Microsoft's roadmap for next year so that you feel equipped for what's next. Uh, we want today to be fun and festive, obviously. That's why our speakers are wearing their holiday outfits um, and, of course, insightful. So. Be prepared to answer polls and submit your predictions and chat with us uh, using the chat feature in your, your GoToWebinar panel. So before we get to the good stuff, for those of you who aren't familiar with CoreView and the latest addition to our family, Simeon Cloud, together we form the number one Microsoft 365 management platform. So if Microsoft is at the core of your operations, you can use CoreView and Simeon Cloud to command your Microsoft operations from a single interface. You can optimize tasks with automation. Um, you can refine your governance strategies, regardless of how complicated your, your architecture is. You can empower IT and non-IT stakeholders alike to access what they need to do their jobs. And you can scale Microsoft 365 for your organization. With that, I will pass it over to Kasha to introduce herself and her team. Kasha, go ahead and take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope that majority recognize me. If not, my name is Kasha Navitska. I'm Product Marketing Manager at CoreView. I've uh, been with the company for the last five years and nearly a decade, working very closely with uh, back then Office 365 and now Microsoft 365 Cloud Solutions. Um, and yes, I'm very excited for this webinar and to be a leader for the rep team, hence my appearance. I probably am the most festive as I've been for the last 10 years. So that's my dedication to the cause. Um, and uh, I would say let's jump to the next slide where I would like to in introduce my super amazing team of Microsoft MVPs. So I'm, I'm very privileged to uh, be able to gather some of the predictions from uh, the experts uh, recognized by Microsoft itself. So on my team, uh, there's going to be Amanda Cerner. Uh, she um, is a Microsoft MVP for M365 Office Apps and Services, working normally uh, daily, da daily on, for Advania. 
Mustafa Taraman, a fantastic uh, MCT, but also MVP for Azure, uh, CTO at Run Event and ECS Band. Uh, Maren Sommers, uh, independent consultant, um, but also a podcaster from M365 Distilled and Mean365 uh, Coach. And Robert Muslow, also MCT and also MVP for Office uh, Apps and Services from QBeyond AG and Skillbridge. So I'm super excited and I think we're going to win, but, you know, go red team. <laughs> um, and with that, with that introduction, uh, let me just, uh, before we uh, kick it off, let me say that it was an incredible job for my team and our team uh, to pull this webinar together for you. And we're going to have a lot of um, experts um, working closely with us. Um, we did the best we could uh, with, with you know, uh, putting everyone together at the same time. Uh, so the way that we did it, we'd actually ask people to record their predictions. So this is how we would like to introduce that predictions for you. Uh, so with that, let's just start with the first predictions coming from Amanda. And Oops, this sorry. Is, uh, tech yeah, technical <laughs> this issue. is a live webinar. Things happen. Just yeah. give us a second. <laughs> Actually, here, <laughs> we I'll, have I'll, a dry run. <laughs> uh, Kasha, I'll do I'll do introductions for for the blue team as well, just so we can okay. set yep. the, uh, the stage. Sorry. So for those that don't know, um, my name is Roy Martinez. I work alongside Kasha in the product marketing team, but technically I'm called a technology evangelist, but um, I kind of wear a, a ton of different hats and antlers apparently. <laughs> and I'll, I also, this is maybe the most festive I've ever been in my life. But um, so yeah, so I'm a real big, huge uh, enthusiast of Microsoft governance. And I've worked in the Microsoft 365 space since it's been a thing. Before that, I was a big SharePoint nerd. So I go way back with, uh, um sharepoint and collaboration tools and you know remote work and modern workforce and that so yeah i've worked with a few different vendors in the space corby's uh home now but um you know i've worked with everybody from uh quest and before that metalogics in the migration space so i have a lot of experience um with the 365 culture and how things have been moving and the blue team um we're kind of representing the uh Corview family here so it's going to be um, uh, a handful of our top leaders uh, here at Corby slash Simeon Cloud. So I've got Yvonne Fioravanti, who is the co-founder and chief technology officer for Corview, a really incredible guy, one of those super geniuses, and um, he's top in my book, as he would say. Uh, I've also got David Mascarella, his partner and co-founder of Corview, chief global strategist, uh, one of the most interesting people to talk to you may ever um, meet. Um, also, the newest addition to our team here is Jeff Nevins, Founder and Chief Technology Officer for Simeon Cloud. We're really excited to have Jeff on board uh, with these predictions. And then uh, finally, to round us out, Vice President of Product uh, Management, Dan Flanagan, who has been with us for a few years now and has really um, kind of shown his stripes in terms of uh, what it means to, to lead a product to, to fruition. So we're really excited to have these really super geniuses from the Corview team having their predictions. And just like with Kasha's team, we've gotten these in the form of uh, videos. So we'll kind of go through those predictions together um, in that format. So before we, Kasha and I kick off, Joel, why don't you give us some insight into how all this is gonna work? Yeah, sure thing. So we're going to kick things off with a few poll questions to help set the stage. Um, then Kasha and the red team will share their predictions. Um, then she'll pass it over to Roy and the blue team to share uh, his predictions, his team's predictions. And at the end, we'll have a head to head vote where you can choose which team's predictions are most applicable to you for 2024. Um, after the vote, Kasha and Roy will share their insights around Microsoft's roadmap for 2024. And the best part is that everyone attending today's webinar will receive a gift from our team, um, which is a subscription to MVP Tony Redmond's Office 365 for IT Pros book. Um, it's a one time ebook and subscription to his monthly. Uh, Microsoft updates and guidance valued at $50. All right, so before we launch into our predictions, we want you guys to predict who you think is going to share the most impactful predictions today. 
So there's a poll up on your screen. Take a second, vote for who you think is going to win, and we'll share the results. All right. It looks like the folks are predicting that Roy is going to come out on top today. Roy, how do you feel about that? So it's as expected. The blue team shall conquer. <laughs> Asha, do you have any anything to say back to that? Let's just wait until the end. <laughs> Love it. All right. The next question that we have for you is, what are your predictions for Microsoft in 2024? So you can either use the questions box in the GoToWebinar panel or the chat feature to submit what you um, expect is going to happen in 2024 as it relates to Microsoft. So I see a couple of things coming in. It looks like a couple of you guys have some predictions around Copilot and AI. That seems like that's kind of a, a common theme here. Cool. So throughout the presentation, just go ahead and let us know what, what your, your predictions are. Um, and if we have time at the end, we'll, we'll cover those. All right. So, Kasha, it is your turn to take the lead here and share your predictions and your thoughts for 2024. Hopefully, now the technology were, will let us do it. So, without the further ado, let's just jump to um, the first one. Hello, everybody. 2023 has truly been the year of co-pilots and it's not going to stop. In 2024, well, I think it's going to explode. My predictions for Microsoft next year is that they will, first of all, make co-pilot for Microsoft 365 actually general available. It will be very interesting to see how many licenses we can buy and the price image for it. Besides that, they will continue to developing Copilot, you know, formerly known Bing Chat Enterprise or Bing Chat. This week, Google announced Gemini, and Gemini will be able to process, besides text, both images, audio, and sound. That means Microsoft, they have to work hard so people will use Copilot. And what can you do besides thinking if you want to buy the licenses or not? Well, you have to start prompting today. You have to give the people in your organization the knowledge and the possibility to start prompting. You can do that in Copilot, for me, no, at Bing Chat Enterprise. Well, if we talk a little bit about something that's not AI and Copilot, because we have those parts as well, and those are equally important. My prediction is that in 2024, Microsoft will make it even easier to uh, teamwork and collaborate even better in Microsoft Teams. I hope and dream and wish for something that will make us leave the group chat and come together in the team and do the teamwork where it's supposed to be. Perfect. Well, happy holidays, everybody. Bye. So that was our first prediction. I don't know what you all think about it. I think it's uh, it's interesting, but it's also something that I've been hearing a lot. And I think that a lot of you can agree that the majority of the focus uh, focus for 2024 is going to be AI, is going to be co-pilot. But I'm actually mm, very happy that Amanda have brought um, Teams. Uh, we all know that Microsoft recently released a new version of Teams. Um, so far, not a lot of the people that I'm talking to are impressed, but certainly there are things that are happening. So um, I don't know how about you. I think that a lot of us are still primarily using it for group chat conversations. And so it's. Um, I think that Teams is going to be like the central um, sort of 
I think I had this conversation with Roy before, sometimes three months ago, nearly as digital operating system. I think this is where we are going to. So Roy, I'm happy to hear your thoughts on that one. I think that was a good uh, start to my team. Absolutely. Let's move on because uh, one of my videos actually touches on this too. So I'll definitely have some color commentary to add here, but I definitely agree that Teams is essentially an alternative operating system, which is interesting considering that we've got um, AI powered windows for 2024 coming as well, but total topic uh, separate altogether. So we can move on. Fantastic. Well, um, I guess we can uh, jump to the next um, video then. Let's do that. Hello, everyone. This is Robert speaking. I'm working for QBeyond in the IT strategy department. And I was asked, what are the predictions for 2024, especially what can IT administrators expect from Microsoft? And one advice is to not do at home to not play any drinking game on the word co-pilot when watching any Microsoft session. <laughs> because, you know, everything will be around co-pilot. And beginning of December 2023, we have already 155 co-pilots and it's growing. So a main task will be to have a kind of a governance of all your co-pilots or other artificial intelligence systems. So keep in control what do you have and where and which field they are helping your, your business. And this also means fine tune your new functionalities like your, all your AI assistants so that they help better and better and better. And this is actually the main second task, I would say it's coming. And then third is also that those IT administrators and people who work with this technology, they know best how it's working. So they will also be included to have a kind of prompt engineering training and simply make kind of an adoption for the users so that they get the most out of all these AI assistants. This is what I think will, uh, will the IT administrators fa face most in 2024 to really discover what they can do with all these new assistants and how to use it in the best way for their business. So, my dear IT administrators, get prepared. Greetings. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Robert, <laughs> you're looking uh, at this webinar. Um, I think I would like to say one thing here. Um, so at the moment, we already have 155 co-pilots. Like, the amount is mind-blowing, in my opinion. Um, I wonder if anybody is predicting how many we're going to end up with uh, you know, December 2024. But I think that is very important what uh, Robert said, to um, focus on prompt engineering, focus on adoption. Um, and this is also an interesting topic that um, I've been privileged to actually discuss directly with Caruana Gatimo. So she's the principal uh, program manager for customer advocacy and, and deeply involved in that kind of, uh, you know, releasing all the materials and, and um, everything related to kind of adoption um, of also Copilot. And this is interesting that it's going to be slightly different with the Copilot. So uh, the most important for the adoption is to actually let your um, end users uh, learn one from another. So it's going to be very important to let people learn from their peers. Um, this is going to be the most effective way to actually help people um, uh, get better if it comes to prompt engineering and, and whatnot. I think that's, that's one of the predictions. I think this is a lot of organizations, businesses, agencies, whoever, um, they're going to focus a lot in that kind of training, but also adoption in general. So not only training, but letting people work with each other to learn more and more. Roy, any thoughts? Um, nah, I, I, I couldn't have said anything better than you did there. Furthermore, I don't want to aid your team in the win, so uh, <laughs> we'll keep it Oh, back. you give up easily. You give up easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you still haven't heard uh, two uh, videos that I have from Marin and, and uh, Mustafa. So let's uh, hop to the third one and uh, let's continue. Hi, Mustafa Taraman here. Uh, I'm Microsoft MVP for Azure and security. So I'm gonna 
what's gonna happen in 2024 so i'm gonna naturally security is my thing so i'm gonna say that security is going to be still a big part uh, a lot of focus on that but based on what we've seen in 2023 AI is also becoming a big thing. So in Microsoft Word, co-pilots are going to be huge. Um, they are just announced, they're a new thing, but my guess, uh, a, a lot of investment in that and they're going to get better and better and better. And obviously, along with that, OpenAI is a, is a huge project that also promises a lot. And I think that's going to be very interesting to, 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 to watch. Yeah, so, I mean, this one is pretty general, right? Uh, thank you, Mustafa. Um, uh, we appreciate the, that prediction. I don't think you're uh, very far off from what's going to happen. I think that everybody is um, kind of being cautious, like excited by cautious. I, I feel and I hear from every conversation that I have, whether it's at the conference or with my peers or whatnot, um, people are excited, but people are also cautious and asking a lot of questions, like how does it actually work? Where is all the, you know, better data or data living? How are, are they secured? And especially now, um, you know, there's going to be more and more regulations if it, come, if it comes to the AI. We already know that within the EMEA, within the European Union, at least, there is already AI law that has been passed recently. It's just, uh, I think, last week that it happened. Um, so the security angle for the for the AI um, solutions and services, but at the same time, I think that a lot of organizations, and I believe that I've uh, I've read statistics um, and Gardner that um, uh, that the security is actually number one initiative at majority of the organizations. So enhancing locking things down, um, and I am you know I'm very happy to see in the initial poll that. The, the the first poll that actually Joel ran um, to say what would like you what would you like to be your superpower that very little people mentioned that we would like to call go back to the uh, pre cloud uh, era uh, that's fantastic that means that you know you want to embrace a uh, cloud and everything that comes with the modern technologies uh, but at the same time I feel like it's a bit overwhelming uh, at least recently. Um, there is a lot of different elements of the whole M365 ecosystem that we have to think about. It's not just, you know, Office 365, it's uh, operating system, it's Entra ID, it's, it's a lot of things. Uh, defenders, purviews, all of that. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, there is a lot of work if it comes to security. Roy? Yeah, this notion of convergence is actually something I lean into pretty heavily in my, in my section. But yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing the, the market and the space and the technology. The lines are blurring between our tried and true silos that we're used to. So it's, it's really an interesting time right now. But yeah. Last video from my team. And uh, let's go with Maven. That's going to be a good one. Hi, my name is Madame, and I've been asked to give you a little heads up of what I think is going to be important in 2024. So it's December, it's getting cold, we need to drink more tea. Um, but the good thing is that in, in Belgium and the Netherlands, we've got this speculose thing. So the rest of the world knows this as these little Biscoff cookies, but we've got these proper speculose bits. So I like the end of the year, but the end of the year is also the time to think back about what happened this year. So this year we saw the rise of AI, co-pilot, everything like that. Um, but what is going to be important next year? So this year we saw the rise of ChatGPT, of course, and the announcement of co-pilot, which is super limited i'm guessing that next year that limit will go down so that you don't need to buy 300 licenses at once i hope it will go down i think i believe it will go down um i also believe that next year we will see that hype cycle that is now top peak will come crashing down 
when people actually realize that mm, it's not going to solve all our problems. But that's AI and Copilot. I mean, who cares? I've been doing SharePoint for over 16 years, and I've seen and guided people and organizations in how to collaborate, how to work together. And last year, I've seen this little new thing creeping up and becoming cooler and more popular. And that little thing is called Loop. I love it. It, it is mind blowing. And Loop just got released now for Teams channels as well. Um, we got Loop workspaces. I think 2024 is going to be the year of Loop. I don't think that, I'm, I'm certain of this. Ask me again next year. Ask me again next year in December, how many organizations I've helped using Loop. How many people I know are using Loop? How many loops I'm getting from other people to fill in? It's gonna be so cool. People need to work together. They always need to do that. And AI, it's cool, but it's it's like this little hype thing. It's like the, the metaverse. Loop is gonna be the thing. And we need to teach people. We need to guide them into how to use it and when to use it and when not to use it. But it's gonna be it's gonna be so cool. Anyway, happy Christmas. Uh, no, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Loop 2024. Ciao. Yeah, this one was longer, but it's the last one. So thank you, Maren. Uh, if you want to hear more of his <laughs> talks, uh, visit the M365 distill. So uh, completely different prediction. I'm super happy to um, you know, hear a different angle. Microsoft Loop, um, I don't know if you're using it. I actually started using it a lot. I've seen that whenever I have to communicate and get some kind of feedback from the leadership team, instead of having like a chain of emails, I can just populate my emails with Loop. A component and it gets me my response, uh, um, my replies faster. And it's, uh, you know, this is just Outlook, Outlook, but now we have it in, in Teams channel. So that is fantastic. I love uh, the fresh perspective. So without, uh, you know, uh, prolonging this because I feel like I've, I've taken a lot of time already. So let's hop on to the, um, to the kind of like a summary uh, of the predictions from, from my team. And then I'm going to pass it, um, pass it to, um, to the blue team, to Roy. So um, if we can um, kind of categorize all of these predictions, I've um, decided to put them in four different categories. So a lot of people, of course, MVPs were talking about the AI um, um, advancements uh, and whatnot, but nearly everybody mentioned collaboration and training, training adoption on you know, that kind of category. Uh, we had a few words about security and governance, preparing and having that co-pilot readiness, but in general, a security angle as well. Um, and then last but not least, a few words from myself, because I put licensing, customization and user experience. So from my perspective, for myself, um, you know, we, we didn't have a video, but I predict that there's going to be changes in licensing. I think that there might be either new packages, some sort of new E tier, maybe E7 or something like that, that is going to be, because Microsoft is like having these cycles. So I think we are in 2024 going to see uh, new uh, new licenses, maybe new packages. Um, so potentially new EM uh, packages. Um, I think the threshold for Copilot licenses is going to be gone at the moment. It's uh, 300 licenses to get um, Copilot. Um, of course, uh, to sum up everybody, what everybody said. So Copilot is going to be generally available. I, we think that, um, but we also think that AI uh, hype is going to kind of um, the cycle is going to plateau slightly. Uh, that's interesting take from Marin. Uh, it's going to be growing more and more. So uh, we should be focusing on fine tuning, on training people on prompt engineering, and there's going to be chase with Gemini by Google. 
Um, if it comes to security, um, so tightening um, any security um, that we already have of the existing infrastructure, but also creating or, 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 or refining um, our governance strategies for, for, for that infrastructure and understanding the implications before the actual implementation of any solutions. Uh, could be Microsoft Loop be a new uh, star of Microsoft? Maybe it's going to be SharePoint Premium. I've heard that it's actually pretty uh, interesting, especially from that customization perspective. So there are gonna, there's going to be a special content and like branding center, uh, which might look super appealing and might mean that the business from a marketing uh, perspective is going to collaborate more with uh, IT to, to, to bring more um, customization to SharePoint, basically, to our internet. Um, simplification, that's another thing that I have heard. So I think these are the summaries for, for, for my team. Uh, and let's move to the blue team. Now beat that, right? <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, that's a uh, tough act to follow. Real quick on Myron, though, you gotta you gotta hand it to the Dutch for delivering their message in the way they do. But uh, couldn't agree more on the Loop tip, by the way. And also, you mentioned SharePoint Premium. I'm anticipating that the marriage between Loop and SharePoint Premium, and how do we classify those concepts from a DLP perspective? That's going to be an interesting topic moving forward. Uh, as a Notion user, I'm really happy to see Loop. Uh, Going forward, it's cool to hear Martin say what he said. All right, so let's crack on, shall we, with the blue team. So as I mentioned before, my team consists of some uh, uh, handy dandy leaders from the Corview team. So we'll just jump directly in with Yvonne Fioravanti first. Uh, I think he's first up for us, let me see here. Yep, Yvonne's up first, so let's see what he has to say. Microsoft Team 2024 is all in on AI, on everything. So Azure was advertised in 2022 as the world computer. Again, in the last Ignite, uh, Satya Nadella told us that it is now the world computer, the biggest. And I think in 2024, they will keep pushing on this road. Azure is the center of everything. All the computers should go there and Copilot will make, will appear in all the Microsoft places, in Microsoft 365, in management tools for security, everything. The biggest uh, issue I see for Microsoft is being able to control uh, Copilot, because once Copilot has access to the whole company data without boundaries, it will be really difficult to manage the privacy and the segregation of the information from a LLM system like Copilot. So this is the biggest issue that Microsoft will have to face. On the customer side, instead, I think that the problem will be that everyone will get access to a lot of power thanks to AI. And as we all know, power is nothing without control. So customer will have to find a way to control and limit the usage of AI because otherwise without any limit, without any control, it's really too much to undo for anyone. This is the main concern that I have on the widespread adoption of Copilot without uh, governance in place for them. Brilliant. Thank you to Ivan for uh, submitting. So a couple of points here. So one, this notion of the um, the so-called world computer of Azure, that, that fascinates me. And it fascinates me to see how that uh, stacks up against the marketing that we're getting from Google with Gemini, because they have a similar story, right? So I'm interested to see how that trajectory kind of plays out over time. But, uh, you know, Yvonne's absolutely correct. I think the, and, and you'll, I think you'll see this as a through line throughout uh, my team's predictions. This notion of being able to control what's now essentially like an open can of worms with Copilot kind of giving us access to things we didn't really have access to before is something that's going to be basically on the minds of every IT administrator, every vendor, every, you know, everyone's going to have that at top of mind now, this whole governance notion. Tasha, thoughts? I, I love it. So that was a very strong message. I have to agree with it. <laughs> I don't really, you know, I can't really think of any of this here. So totally agree. Right. That's okay. We'll crack on. Also, I think I just referred to Marin earlier as Dutch, but I meant Belgian. <laughs> My apologies to Marin right, publicly. But uh, cracking on then. So let's see. Next up, I've got um, 
yeah, let's hear from uh, Yvonne's co-founder and partner in crime, David Mascarella. So let's hear what David has to say here. My prediction for uh, 2024 is that Microsoft is uh, likely to continue integrating uh, advanced uh, AI and machine learning uh, into its suite of product, uh, including Microsoft 365, obviously. This could manifest in a smarter and more intuitive office application, enhanced data ana analysis tool in like Excel, and more sophisticated, uh, IT driven insight uh, in business intelligent tools uh, like Power BI. But uh, uh, the real innovation that I'm looking for is uh, on Teams. So, new generative uh, AI, it's uh, a new way user can adopt to interact with machine smarter, easier, smooth way to interact with machine. And uh, today, Teams uh, is uh, the Microsoft 365 hub where users can access all the different uh, solutions of Microsoft. So I'm expecting that Microsoft may introduce a more robust uh, and uh, immersive collaboration tool. This could include uh, enhanced video conference featuring Teams, uh, more sophisticated virtual collaboration in space uh, and better integration in workflow management uh, to streamline remote work. So this is my prediction for the 2024. Yeah, the, uh, the famous David Mascarella with some pretty astute observations. So uh, two things that strike me with this uh, prediction that really resonated with me is A, Copilot, it, you know, in its most you know, um, the, the most flamboyant way to put it is that Copilot will change the way we interact with Microsoft 365. David pinpointed that. I think it's kind of true. And I'm, I'm anxious to see how that evolves. But also this notion that team, again, we, we mentioned it before, Kasha, but Teams really is kind of this, in a lack of a better term, like an OS for Microsoft 365. So it is the hub, the, um, uh, the, the central control point for 365. And then David used a really interesting term. He said immersive. The idea of having a more immersive experience with teams is exciting and really cool. Um, what do you think about that? I don't know how I feel about that because like the whole metaverse, it's not really, I'm not, I'm not really bought in there yet. So I don't know. I mean, I agree. Uh, and it's in line with, uh, with what Amanda said. So teams is gonna probably be the service and in, in Microsoft 365, like a central thing, but um, the whole metaverse and immersive experience, I don't think it's gonna. Ooh, good. So we got some some proper competitive clash here. Cool. All right. <laughs> this whole Great. thing, uh, what you think, uh, dear yeah, audience? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel on this topic, right? Um, okay. So let's crack on because time is becoming a, a, a situation for us. So let's uh, jump on to. Oh, this is a good. One. So Jeff Nevins from um, the Simian Cloud, uh, our recent new partners in crime here. Let's have a see what Jeff has to say about the future of Microsoft 365. Microsoft positioned itself as the co-pilot company in 2023 by pairing co-pilot AI with the majority of its flagship products, ranging from Office 365 to Office desktop apps, uh, SharePoint, Teams, Exchange Online, um, as well as uh, Azure AD and Windows itself. Um, a tool like Simeon helps customers manage their Microsoft 365 environments by giving them granular insight into what's configured in those environments and where, and allowing customers to granularly roll out different features one at a time without uh, having all co-pilot features enabled all at once across the entire ecosystem. Short and sweet and to the point, but this is one I like because it's, it speaks to two concepts. It speaks again to this notion of control and governance, but also it speaks to the macro view, right? Obviously, we know multi-tenancy is going to be a kind of a standard moving forward, at least for some uh, levels of enterprise, but being able to view things at the macro level and you know not to shamelessly plug but that's kind of what Simeon cloud's focus focal point is as a vendor is that macro view of tenant configurations i think we'll see more of that uh moving forward to jeff's point uh kasha thoughts 
Well, this is interesting, but at the same time, there's going to be a moment later on when we discuss the, I mean, discuss or just highlight a few things from the Microsoft roadmap itself. So the multi-tenancy is going to be one of the points there. So I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, we'll crack on. One more from my team and then we'll uh, sum up and, and move forward. So the last one on my list is our VP of Product Management, Dan Flanagan. So let's see what Dan has to say. I think with Microsoft, one of the most amazing things is the range of covers of organizations that they cover from the largest organizations in the world to the smallest mom and pop shops that are you know, just basically using Office. And so I think there's always opportunities because of that broad coverage for ISVs like CoreView to come in and add additional value. So for example, with Copilot, um, and organizations that have been relying on security by obscurity for making sure that uh, documents and content is not available to employees. For some organizations, access reviews that are part of the governance solution may be perfectly adequate. But for a lot of organizations, that really uh, might not be enough. And so that's an opportunity for organizations like CoreView to come in and add additional value on top of Microsoft solutions to really help out those organizations. And I think that that's just going to be a tremendous opportunity uh, in 2024. You're going to see lots of ISVs that are coming in with solutions to assist uh, in governance of AI and to assist in governance of the power platform because these are areas that are exploding so rapidly and organizations are taking advantage of so quickly. They also need better controls to get their arms around them and make sure they're using them with uh, compliance in mind and with cost effectiveness in mind. So I think that's just a great opportunity for somebody like CoreView in 2024. Yeah, couldn't agree more from the general kind of ISV perspective. So he touched on one thing here, security by obscurity, which is I'm sure everyone knows, but basically the notion that just by the nature of having things hidden or, or tucked away or kind of unknown, that in and of itself provides some layer of security. And that's going to go away when Copilot basically opens the can up. Um, uh, Kasha, anything to jump in on that before I move on to the summary here? I think that's pretty much on point, honestly. Like what I yep. see whenever I go to like events, and whatnot, so I have to agree here. Brilliant. Cool. Well, I'm gonna crack on then. Uh, so for me, I also put them into four categories. My categories are a little bit different. Obviously, AI and automation advancements the same. Um, but we talked a lot about security and governance. Obviously, that's gonna be a through line no matter where you're at. Um, but the vendor landscape, and I think it's interesting to see. Again, we're Obviously, in Corby, we are an ISP, so we're kind of focused on that angle. But it is interesting to think about how the changes that are coming will affect the way that the vendor landscape uh, evolves. And then on my own personal side, I just this notion, this convergence factor, this way that all things are kind of um, graying and like the, the tried and true concepts and notions that we're used to are evolving and organically moving. And we don't really know how to speak to things really eloquently just yet. But just to summarize whatever I said, so on the um, AI and automation tip, again, nothing too new, but this notion of the Azure as a world computer, I, I love this kind of buzzy language, but it really is buzzy language, right? Um, but yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, we're getting smarter and more intuitive applications. Copilot's opening up the, uh, the floodgates and we're, we're, we're now having to be put in a position where we need to control that. Team is becoming more immersive, as David said. Uh, you may disagree or agree with that, but there's no denying that Teams is kind of an epicenter for the Microsoft 365 experience. And the way we're interfacing with our devices uh, is potentially changing. Um, security by obscurity is a memory. We no longer have that to lean on. So it's all governance, governance, governance. Um, and understanding the implications of all this new tech before we implement, uh, to Jeff Nevin's point, is gonna be a, a critical point. Uh, from the general vendor landscape perspective, again, governance is the key. Governance of Copilot. How do we get our arms around all this AI? How do we get our arms around Power Platform? To Dan's point, right? So Power Platform is something we haven't really mentioned too much, but you know, it's just going to continue up and to the right. And then management of those macro configurations, right? Um, a couple of things I added just as not so much predictions, but really just things that I'm anxious to see the evolution of is again, the further convergence of all these disparate admin skill sets turning into new roles, new titles. You know, we're gonna have now uh, titles and roles 
relevant to AI skills, you know, prompt engineering comes to mind, things of this nature. Um, and then just changes in the language that we're using. You know, I remember a time when there was no such thing as modern workforce. I remember a time when there was no such thing as digital transformation, but now these new concepts are becoming, you know, the, the, the snowball is rolling and getting any momentum and we're getting more and more kind of new ways to think and talk about the things that we've done throughout our careers. And I think that's kind of cool and exciting. So um, yeah, without further ado, uh, let's jump over and kind of get to the meat and potatoes of today's session. And let's take a look and figure out who is the winner. So Joelle? Awesome, yes. Please take a moment to cast your vote for the team uh, that you, whose insights you felt were most impactful. So we'll give you just a moment to get your answers in. Awesome. All right. It looks like we have a consensus here. Some people are still trickling in, but it looks like the red team is the winner. Kasha and the red team. Um, congratulations. Um, I will now pass it over to you to cover um a few more uh things related to microsoft and what you see is going to happen next year thank you and thank you everyone for voting i don't see us as uh, like winners winners i think that yes of course like you know that was all fun but i feel like everybody that we had speaking to us today is absolutely fantastic in contribution so i'd like to take thank everyone and say that this is like a shared victory like i don't i don't really you know i don't want to see it like just winner <laughs> um but yeah microsoft roadmap it's a lot of items that we could be talking about and we don't really have time we're over time so just wanted to highlight the majority or like not majority the, the major uh, sorry um planned launches or changes in 2024 uh, so there is talks about the new Office 2024, as in Microsoft Office 2024. So that would mean that IT admins probably would need to uh, be prepared for uh, soon, maybe deprecation of 2019 and, and, and 2016, if that's still the case. Um, of course, the shift towards more AI-driven tools. So there's plenty of items that are very closely related to Copilot. Um, there's more um, new features uh, coming to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Um, also, if it comes to that multi-tenancy, so um, there is going to there is plan for a, a bit more Mac review if you have a multi-tenant to 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 have a more robust and advanced reporting, but also management capabilities. This is interesting. Um, I think for Corby team as well to observe. Um, and there's a lot of work planned for um, enhancing Viva and Gage. So I don't know if you're using this in the, com in, in, in the organization, but um, a lot of the um, parties that I'm talking to as well are either planning or already are in the process of actually putting a lot of work into Viva and Gage. So this is interesting to see. So major, major, uh, let's say things planned for Microsoft from Microsoft for 2024, not just based um, you know, I didn't want to just come to you with uh, our speculations because predictions are fun, but at the same time, let's not forget that there is actual roadmap and um, sometimes we just need to carve out some time to, to, to visit it. So yeah, um, actually, as just over the time, I didn't, you know, I don't want to spend too much time. Roy, do you want to add anything? No, no, I was just going to say I, again, yeah, these, this whole webinar has been predictions. I remember, we predicted that Blue would win at the end, so we really don't know what the future holds, right? So. Just keep that take all this with a grain of salt we're just here to provide our insights and share what we can but yeah let's give a shout out Kasha, to your uh, wonderful team who brought in the victory yeah oh thank you thank you thank you yeah um thank you again everyone involved thank you for our audience thank you for uh, voters but thank you mvps as well um and dear audience i would really uh, be super grateful if you can follow uh, these guys or on twitter or, or on linkedin or anywhere um that would mean a lot because these are the people that are going to conferences, talking to you, talking to prospects, talking to uh, customers, talking to Microsoft product groups. So, you know, they are kind of our link um, uh, between all of us in this marvelous ecosystem. So I would appreciate that. Thank you again. <laughs> I think that's it, right?
That's it. Yes. Last but not least, you know, with all the talk about AI, we figured you guys might enjoy a fun throwback, um, especially those of you that voted in the icebreaker poll that you wanted to go back to the pre-cloud era. Um, so here is what AI generated when asked to provide the Windows XP Bliss background turn into a winter holiday scene. Um, so we thought this was hilarious, wanted to share it with you guys um, and just say thank you for attending. Happy holidays to you from, from CoreView um, and we hope to see you next year. Have a good one. Thank you very much. <laughs> Happy holidays. Bye-bye.